again, having some more fun with Teradata Aster and Teradata itself, uh, for that matter. One of the things uh, that is a real issue, especially in the healthcare space, is the massive amount of records. While Click is an in-memory tool, we do not have to have everything loaded in memory. So when our competitors say, ah, oh, that's great if you got, you know, a couple million rows or a hundred million rows or 400 million rows, but certainly you can't deal with billions or trillions of rows. Well, that's where our competitors are wrong, and that's what this video is for. We have technology called Direct Discovery that allows us to find the unique primary keys, basically what would be the lookup values um, for some large, massive system like Teradata. We can go get that data, and then based on you selecting a cohort, once you've created a set that makes sense for the human to be able to consume all of the rest of the um, dimensional fields for, then we'll go launch it. So if you were to look something up on the Click website, you would be looking for direct discovery. I'm going to jump in and show you how this works. I simply connect to my um, ODBC connection for Aster like I've done in the past in my other videos. Only this time we're doing quite a bit of difference. We're doing what's called a direct query. So we specifically say, hey, by the way, hello, this is different. I don't want you to get everything. I want you to get these dimensions. And by the way, these are details that once I have a cohort, I'm going to have you go look up on the fly. So we're going to go get that data for this piece of it live. And it comes from this surgery events table. So I'm going to tell it to load the data. And you're going to see that what he does is he, and he goes out quite differently than what he normally does. And he's going to say, give me all of the unique record IDs that you have out in the system. And also get me all of the different unique procedure names that are in the system. How do we know that's what's happened? I'm going to go into the Aster Management Console and we can take a look. He's saying, give me the unique record IDs and give me the unique procedures from that. Remember that these are the last things at the top of our list because as we go through this data, we're going to see that change. So once I have that loaded, I can actually build a screen. And the first screen is just going to be to help me um, identify my cohort. So you'll see we've got our th nearly 3,000 procedures, our 469,000 record IDs, and this could be billions, literally. All we're using is the unique values, and we're going to try to figure out our cohort. So I'm going to narrow this down to this procedure type, and as I do that, it's going to filter through all that data you'll see. And he finds me 155 distinct record IDs. If I then go to look at the display for this, you'll see that now he has these details. And what's really kind of neat is you'll see record ID is just a normal field, procedures a normally displayed field. You'll see these little lock indicators indicating these are dimensional fields that are only pulled on the fly. Um, you can't really use these for a list box type of an item. Now, I can come back here, and let's say that I wanted to filter this even further in some way. So I'm going to pick a handful of these items. And now I've narrowed my cohort down in whatever way I would want to do this. And we're going to get that count here. I've identified 14 records. If I go to my screen, you can see that we're going to display these. And if I go back to the Aster Management Console, you'll see what we're looking at. The first one, he did the query for just these. Okay. And you'll see he's actually saying, give me the records where that record ID is in and that procedure is in. So I've created a direct discovery where I can identify my primary key fields, and then I've got these dimensional fields that could be added. 
In this way, you can now do aster type queries to find pathing or other predictive analytics, um, text analytics, those kind of things, and identify the cohort now once you've identified what you think you're interested in, and then go get the data out of your pool of potentially billions of records that are sitting out there in